and welcome back to Planet Nibiru. I'd like to take a moment to apologize for breaking up the order of the series we are doing on underground military bases, bunkers, tunnel systems, and seed balls. However, today we will be discussing four breaking space news stories that just couldn't wait and I feel like we need to have them out there in the community as soon as possible. The four stories are 1. Stars colliding. Astronomers capture some cosmic fireworks as stars collide in the distant galaxy. 2. The disappearance of a young ufologist in Brazil. 3. The Air Force will soon be hiring for a new job, that of space police. And four, a large asteroid that's going to zoom by on the 19th of this month. So let's jump right in there. Stars colliding. These incredible pictures show a huge explosion caused by two stars smashing into each other. Astronomers have captured this incredible moment when two stars collided 500 years ago to cause the spectacular explosion that is still visible from Earth. After a pair of adolescent protostars grazed each other, they triggered a powerful eruption, launching dust and gas into space at more than 150 kilometers per second. Stargazers snap images of an epic inferno which obliterated a distant galaxy as two stars collided, giving the show of a lifetime. The explosion released as much energy as our sun emits over the course of 10 million years. New images from the Atamaka Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array have allowed astronomers to gain new insights into the relationship among partner stars. The protostars formed more than 100,000 years ago in the Orion Molecular Cloud, which is a dense star factory about 1,500 light years from Earth. They latched onto each other gravitationally and gradually drew closer, before grazing each other and colliding. Today, the remains of this spectacular explosion are still visible from Earth, as shown in the images published in the Astrophysical Journal. Lead author Dr. John Bailey from the University of Colorado says, What we see in this once calm, stellar nursery is a cosmic version of a 4th of July fireworks display, with giant streamers rocketing off in all directions. Groups of stars such as those in OMC1 are born when a cloud of gas hundreds of times more massive than our sun begins to collapse under its own gravity. In the densest regions of the early formations of stars begin to drift about randomly. Over time, gravity can draw the formations towards the largest protostar and if they become too close, violent interactions can occur. According to the researchers, such explosions are expected to be relatively short-lived with remnants like those seen by Alma lasting only centuries. The team observed the aftermath of the explosion with the Gemini South Telescope in Chile. Their images taken in near-infrared reveal the remarkable structure of the streamers which extend nearly one light year from end to end. Hints of the explosion were first uncovered in 2009 with the submillimeter array in Hawaii, but the new ALMA array provides much more clarity, unveiling important details about the distribution and high velocity motion of the carbon monoxide gas inside the streamers. This helps astronomers understand the underlying force of the blast and the impact such events could have on formations across the galaxy. Dr. Bailey said people most often associate stellar explosions with ancient stars like a nova eruption on the surface of a decaying star or even the more spectacular supernova death of an extremely massive star. Alma has given us new insights into explosions on the other end of the stellar life cycle, the birth of a star. The Disappearing Ufologist Earlier this week, a Brazilian student Alien enthusiast and researcher Bruno Borges mysteriously disappeared, leaving behind locked, code-covered room and a statue of 16th century philosopher who predicted extraterrestrial life. Bruno Borges was 24 years old, reportedly vanished from his family home in Brazil last Monday while working on a secretive project. The student has mysteriously disappeared in Brazil, leaving behind only a locked room, covered in code, and a 2,000 pound statue of a 16th century alien hunter. The psychology student's disappearance has sparked worldwide interest, 
with many believing he's been abducted by aliens, after a bizarre video of the inside of his bedroom was leaked online. Borges appears to have turned the room into a shrine to the extraterrestrial world, has removed all of the furniture, and put up a creepy self-portrait of himself with an alien. The walls are also covered with coded writing and signs associated with Satanism and the Illuminati and are also spread across the floor. Among the writings were passages from the Bible and phrases from Leonardo da Vinci which lay among the 14 handwritten books which were also encrypted. There was also a huge statue of philosopher Giordano Bruno which was reportedly bought for 2,000 pounds a few weeks ago. Giordano Bruno was one of the first thinkers to predict the existence of extraterrestrial life, and some have suggested that the boy was trying to complete his work. Relatives say Borges was constantly asking them for funding for his latest secretive project, but wouldn't give any details apart from saying he was writing a series of books that would change humanity in a good way. The student's father, Atos Borges, said he last saw his son when they left their family home in Rio Branco without any money after lunch on March 27th. He said the family had received some information, but nothing concrete and nothing that would indicate what has happened. He told G1Globo.com, We've tried to call him on his cell phone, but it's off. He's never gone before. He did not take anything with him and the last time we saw him was leaving home on Monday. Borges' mother, Denise Borges, told the Gaucho newspaper that the family had lunch together and that everything seemed fine. She said he was clever, he was a born leader with the high powers of persuasion. He's a very kind-hearted boy. Mr. and Mrs. Borges had just returned from a month-long trip just before his disappearance. While they were away, Borgia's sister, Gabriella, said her brother had isolated himself in his bedroom, which he always kept locked. Gabriella says she believes her brother has a plan and is working on publishing the 14 handwritten books found in his room. She said, we are very, very worried. Now we think he's okay. He has a project, which is the publication of these 14 books. I think he had to do it this way. The 14 bound manuscripts each with Roman numerals on them, were found in the room, written in the same code that is on the walls. A photograph that allegedly shows one page of the books has appeared and has been decoded by a Brazilian computer expert. One passage supposedly says, It is easy to accept what you have been taught since childhood and what is wrong. It is difficult as an adult to understand that you were wrongly taught that what you suspected was correct since you were a child. In other words, if you fit into the system, your behavior will be determined, making you at the mercy of beliefs already provided and well-established dogmas and rituals with the masses. The Criminal Investigation Department are investigating Borges' disappearance. According to the lead investigator, Fabrizio Sobrera, the case remains confidential, but all possibilities are being considered. Next job for the USA Air Force, Space Cop. In the not too distant future, the United States Air Force may become a sort of space cop. An off-earth economy cannot truly take off unless moon miners and other pioneering entrepreneurs are able to operate in a safe and stable environment, said Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Schilling of Air University. The Navy secures the freedom of action for commerce globally for the good of all humankind and I think it's going to take a force very similar to that to provide the predictability and security that the marketplace of space will need. Schilling said Tuesday, April 4th, during a panel discussion at the 33rd National Space Symposium in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I think that it would be the role of the United States Air Force moving into the future. Somebody needs to secure and protect strategic choke points such as lunar ice deposits and gravitationally stable spots near the moon where spacecraft can camp out without burning fuel. Fundamentally, I'd like to be that somebody with a value system that reflects the values that I share. I believe in the value of individual property rights and the rule of law. United Launch Alliance CEO Tony Bruno moderated the panel which featured Schilling, Offworld CEO Jim Caravalla, Maiden Space CEO Andrew Rush, 
and former NASA astronaut Sandy Magnus, executive director of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. The panel focused on how activities in space could help spur the establishment of a sustainable off-Earth economy, the basic idea behind the ULA-led Cislunar 1000 plan. We have a vision. Within just a couple of decades from this moment in time, there will be 1,000 men and women living and working in space permanently, Bruno said, as NASA and other people push deeper and deeper into space to explore. We want to develop the space between here and the moon. This vision is not so far-fetched, panelists said. Indeed, humanity may have recently reached an inflection point in the quest for off-Earth settlement. Thanks to the combination of advancing technology, a glut of investment money, and a coalescing community of customers and end users. Some of this technology is pretty high profile. Maiden Space is already manufacturing products on demand for customers using its 3D printer aboard the International Space Station, for example. And both SpaceX and Blue Origin have landed and reflown rockets an approach that could lower the cost of spaceflight significantly. We have an opportunity to do this now, Magnus said, referring to the Cislunar 1000 vision. It's going to take some time to build this out, but the momentum's there, and it's very exciting. Establishing a secure environment in which such a space settlement can exist is part of the overall effort, Schilling stressed. There's an old saying, the flag follows commerce. Bruno agreed with that assessment, but he added, Successful and prosperous commerce comes after the flag. We see that today on Earth. Where regions are stable and secure, where people are safe, commerce flourishes. And where that is not true, it does not. The Massive Asteroid A massive asteroid is going to zip past Earth later this month. The universe never lets us here on Earth go very long before reminding us that we're really just a random dice roll away from a global catastrophe. The next timely reminder will happen on April 19th when asteroid 2014 JO25 will cruise by our planet at a relatively safe distance of roughly 1.1 million miles. That distance, while relatively comfortable, is still pretty close, especially when you realize how large the rock actually is. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL, describes 2014 JO25 as being approximately 2,000 feet wide, or about 650 meters across, which is a little more than two-fifths of a mile. That's a pretty large chunk of rock and NASA says it's the largest asteroid to come that close to Earth since 2004 with the next similar flyby predicted to occur in 2027, when asteroid 1999 AN10, measured at about a half a mile in width, makes an appearance at a distance of roughly 236,000 miles. This will be significantly closer. For a few nights following April 19th, amateur astronomers may be able to catch a glimpse of 2014 J025 thanks to its gaining brightness. Though it will be somewhat difficult to spot, this particular asteroid isn't expected to come this close to our planet again for another 500 years or more. April 19th will also mark the appearance of a comet for some stargazers who happen to live in the right place. Comet Pan Stars C2015ER61 will be at its nearest point to Earth that day, though it'll still be in a very distant 109 million miles away. Having gained a lot of brightness since its discovery in 2015, the comet can now be seen with binoculars at specific times of day. That concludes this special edition of Planet Nibiru. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, your likes, subscribes, and comments. We truly appreciate every single viewer and member of our community. Please take a moment to stop by our Spreadsheet store as we have new designs coming out almost every day now. Thanks again, and we'll see you guys soon. Hey folks, I just wanted to take a quick minute to let you know that our Spreadshirt store is up and running. It's a great way to show support for the channel and our search for truth. We have a bunch of cool Planet x based designs as well as some very cool pop culture and geographical designs that we think you will love. 
Our designs are created from some of the things that we love most. Our search for truth, movies that we love, and TV shows we grew up on. These cool original designs will make great conversation starters, especially if someone else recognizes the significance of the logo or slogan. So click on the link and visit our Spreadshirt store today. As always, thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting on our videos. We will be back soon with more great stuff. See you then.